Well, hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, where today we're going to take a look at color grading video footage using Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro, specifically just how different you can make your scenes look. In one minute, it can be a perfectly white balanced scene, the next minute it can be a warm, balmy sunset, and the next minute it can be a cold, foreboding night type shot. We're going to cover some of that here in this tutorial. Now, got to let you guys know, this tutorial is brought to us by one of our sponsors, ProductionCreate.com. They supply filmmakers and video makers and pretty much anyone that picks up a video camera with all kinds of great assets and After Effects templates and stock footage and just a lot of really, really cool stuff they have over on their site. And most importantly, they have chosen to sponsor this channel. And for that, I'm super appreciative. Uh, and if you enjoy the content you see on this channel, they're our sponsors. So go check them out, support them. There'll be a link down in the description. You can check everything out and we'll talk a little bit about them uh, further into this video as well. So with that out of the way, well, before all that's out of the way, make sure you subscribe to my channel as well if you enjoy this video. And let's jump into Premiere now and check this thing out. All right, here we are in Premiere Pro. I've got this beautiful piece of footage that was shot on a red Epic. Uh, we're going to be playing with this today and looking at some color grading techniques uh, that may be helpful to you, whether you're using, let's say, a $400 setup or a $40,000 setup to shoot your videos. Now, I'm going to avoid using LUTs or lookup tables in this tutorial just because of how they, they, they tend to be specific to a certain type of footage uh, and they can be kind of finicky. Instead of just looking at sort of a LUT or preset type thing, I want to use this Illumetry color and talk about different techniques and tools that I like to use in general when I begin attacking a new film project. Hopefully this will help you uh, as you attack your very own film project. So first things first. I like to jump into the very useful color workspace up here in Premiere Pro. It's one of their sort of stock workspaces now with the newer versions of Premiere. Uh, and uh, the color workspace features the Lumetri color panel always open over to the right side of the screen for easy access. It's also a good idea to get your Lumetri scopes out so you can keep an eye on the visual representation uh, both of the current state of color and luma or brightness in your film uh, and also the changes as you are making them. So we'll keep an eye on the scopes and I'll explain uh, as we go so it's, you know, it, it, it's not all that obvious but as soon as you begin to kind of understand it, it becomes pretty clear pretty quickly. You can right-click in your Lumetri Scopes panel and choose which scopes you would like to see. So Premiere has a, a variety of scopes you can choose from. I typically like to work with Waveform RGB, the Histogram, and the Vector Scope YUV. Now, one little trick to know is that you can just double-click right here within the Lumetri Scopes panel area to rearrange or sort of cycle the scopes, and it'll rotate them around to get them placed exactly how you like. I'll just adjust mine a little bit uh, if need be. Now, even though we're grading a piece of footage here, I like to generally color correct my shots first. This is because uh, every shot from a particular scene or segment will begin at the sort of the same color baseline for when I go and grade. So if I grade one clip, I can copy those grading settings over to all the rest of the clips, and they're all going to work because they've all initially been sort of brought to the same spot when I go in and color grade them. This way, of course, one shot doesn't have an overabundance of blue or magenta or any color, uh, which would show through our final color grade and make all these different shots, after they're color graded, look a little differently. So now that I have my scopes up, it's time to take a look at Lumetri Color itself. Because of my time in Photoshop, I much prefer the curves to make the bulk of my changes, and then I cycle through to the basic corrections and the very powerful and, and very useful color wheels as well here. These are the tools that I use for nearly all of my grading and editing that I do here in Premiere Pro. So taking a peek over at my waveform RGB, I can see that this shot does not quite have the contrast applied to it that it could. So we'll flood some contrast into here by using curves. All right, let's take a quick break from this tutorial. I want to give our sponsor a proper shout out here. In fact, I've got a little page of notes so I can just run through this real quick so we can learn a little bit about ProductionCrate.com and why they're such a special company and not just because they chose to sponsor us. Uh, so ProductionCrate.com, it's a great site, a great site for picking up a wide variety of video editing assets. They've got transitions, they've got some After Effects templates, they've got some lens flares, visual effects, and really a whole lot more. Sound effects, all kinds of stuff. Like you name it, they probably have it. You got, you just got to go over, uh, you got to get over there and check them out. Now, not only do they offer a number of these resources for free, you could just go and download them right now if you wanted, uh, but a subscription for the sort of, sort of premium side of the site is just 39 bucks a year. That equals out to like $3.25 a month. 
So it's like less than a cup of coffee. Really, why wouldn't you get it? That's the real question. Um, and as I say here on my, on my sheet of notes, hardly a heavy price to pay to have instant access to a library of video editing assets that you'll just love. So go check them out and consider subscribing over at ProductionCrate.com. Uh, make sure you use the link down in the description of this video. That way we know, uh, that way they know that we sent you and they can know that, hey, it's worthwhile to keep sponsoring this channel because we got a lot of great people over here who love video editing assets and are willing to go and support these subscribers and just, you know, I don't know, just all, it all works together well. You scratch my back, I scratch yours kind of thing. So go check them out, ProductionCrate.com. Use that link down in the bio. And uh, without further ado, as I always say, let's get back to this video. Now, to quickly understand how curves works, I'll drag the black point straight upward, and we can see how the waveform responds by showing that all the blacks, all the dark stuff down there, all the blacks in the image have been boosted way upward. You can double-click on that point to reset the curves, and then the point at the top right of the curve is the white point. I can drag this downward to dull or flatten the brightest areas of the image, and again, watch how the waveform reacts to this. It is now showing that we have no bright whites in the image, Everything has been made darker and less contrasty. Again, we'll double click the curve here to reset it. Now we can add contrast to our image by adding a point to the very middle of the curve and then adding another point to the lower area of the curve and dragging that point downward a little bit. And then by adding another point to, uh, higher up on the curve and dragging that point upward a little bit. This essentially is darkening the shadows and brightening the brights, which will introduce contrast. Our waveform should now be more spread out, almost touching the zero dark point and the 100 bright point, which, by the way, is how we can tell we have a bit of contrast in our, uh, in our frame, our image here as well. Now, an important thing to note about contrast is you don't need to make your footage as contrasty as possible. Like, just because you can push the dark point to zero doesn't necessarily mean you always should. Just looking at the waveform, you can get an indication or an idea of, wow, this footage is very low contrast. Maybe I should put a little contrast in there. Don't ignore your eyes entirely. Make sure every once in a while you check in on the footage and make sure that it's looking good as well. Remember, the waveform monitor or any of these lumetri scopes, they're just a tool by which we can measure the contrast or color and decide how much or how little of these things we want in our shot. In this waveform, we can also see that this shot has color that's kind of shooting all over the place with a tinge of red and a bit of extra blue running through sort of the lower mid-tones and a bit of blueness in my highlights. Now, when I actually look at the video, it's hard to see that red with the naked eye, at least my naked eye. So this is where the data that the waveform RGB outputs, that data is so useful in a situation like this. So to work on leveling this color out and trying to color correct this thing a little bit, we want to use the color channels in the curves that are in the Lumetri color panel. You got it? And target those parts of the film and simply try to pull them back in line with each other in the waveform. So I, that might sound a little bit like Egyptian, but follow me here for a second. I'm going to jump into the red channel. I'm going to pull up a little on the lower third of the curve line until we see the red bits disappear behind the green in my waveform. Boom! There you go. It's it, We got it. It's done. Uh, next, I'll go over to the green channel because I see some magenta in the waveform. And magenta, by the way, it's the opposite of green. And, in case you're wondering, cyan is the opposite of red. So if we drag down on that red channel, we'll introduce cyan or this sort of aqua color to our shot. Uh, whereas green, you either pull up to add green, pull down to add some magenta. And here in the green channel, I'll target very near the top of the curve and drag downward a little to just combat that magenta and watch my waveform until it disappears as well. If I need to, I can jump back to the red channel and tweak and adjust it to get things just right. Next, I'm going to jump into the blue channel. Now, yellow is the opposite of blue. So these blue and yellow swings that I'm seeing in the waveform, these can be pushed a little closer together here in this channel. And I'm going to add a point just below the middle of my curve line and drag downward and continue to finesse and adjust this curve until I get the colors lined up the way I want them to be. Now, you can spend as much time as you want on this process. In fact, I might even go back right now and tweak some of the other settings I've already worked with if need be. But if you're happy with your image, we're going to head on to the next step, which is going to be heading up to the basic correction tab and let's begin playing with some of the color settings to grade the footage a little bit let's um a quick side note here i love curves enough that sometimes i'll just add a second lumetri color effect just to edit it over in the effect controls tab so i can have two sets of curves on one shot now there is a dedicated curves effect but, you know, Lumetri Color has all the bells and whistles and all kinds of other stuff that can be added as well. So I'll generally go with a double Lumetri Color. Uh, but in this case, we're, we got more than enough control with a single Lumetri Color. 
But what I'm trying to say is sometimes I would go one Lumetri color with curves for color correcting and establishing that baseline image, and then a fresh Lumetri color for the actual sort of creative color grading work. Anyway, back in the basic correction tab, we'll try to make this shot more like a sunset over the lake in the evening, that kind of vibe. So I'm going to drop the exposure down, down, down to about negative 1.5, and then I'm also going to reduce contrast a touch to about negative 15. Then I'm going to drop the shadows about negative 20, so this is going to help introduce new contrast, and drop the whites by the same amount, so about negative 20 on the whites or so. It doesn't have to be exactly that. I'm just I'm finessing this image. Let's kick about plus 10 into the blacks and then boost the saturation to around 130. After that, I'm going to tweak the white balance. So use the sliders at the top of Lumetri Color and boost the temperature. Let's boost it up around 50, I would say. And then we'll slide the tint over, push some magenta into this image, maybe to about 20. This will establish, as you see, a very vivid, deep, moody sunset feel to this shot. Now, lastly, I'm going to head to the color wheels and reduce the level of the shadows to add some contrast, boost the level of midtones uh, just a little bit, and reduce the level of the highlights to flatten those brighter colors and just, again, make the image a little moodier. Now we can use these color wheels themselves to influence the colors in the shot. Here is an important area to focus on the Vectorscope YUV. The Vectorscope YUV is going to indicate to us the level of saturation in any given direction. So the Vectorscope YUV has a bunch of little squares, as you see here. These indicate colors like red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow, as you see, of course. And the more sort of white scuzz there is shooting in any direction, the more saturation of that particular color there is in the shot. And you can think of the secondary line enclosing the white spray as the max level of saturation that can be displayed on a screen for mass broadcast. Colors within here are what are considered broadcast safe colors. So I'll check in with my color wheels and I'll add a, a little tiny bit of red magenta to the shadows, maybe a, a little tiny bit of orange to the midtones, and a kiss of like yellowish red to the highlights area. And I think that's about right. In fact, let's just pump a load of magenta into the midtones and watch what the vector scope YUV does. You can see how as all of this magenta is just destroying our image, all of that white spray is heading in the magenta direction, or most of it at least, is heading in that magenta direction in the YUV vector scope, therefore indicating to us we have a heavy cast of magenta in this image. Now, of course, in our case, that's pretty obvious. But in a case where, for instance, uh, an awning is supposed to be a perfect yellow color instead of, you know, an orange, Having this vector scope really helping you understand how the color is going to be displayed, that can be very, very helpful just to make sure you're getting accurate and properly saturated colors uh, in your film or in your footage, in your video, whatever it may be. So at this point, I'm just, of course, I'm just going to undo that little bit there. We can jump over to the Effect Controls panel, and I'm going to click on the little FX button to see a true before and after of how this clip looks ungraded versus graded by toggling the effect on or off just like that. And that is pretty much going to wrap it up for our use here in Premiere Pro today. Uh, quite a difference there on that footage. A lot that you can do with Lumetri Color. It's really such an effective tool. And I figured instead of coming in here today and just feeding you a single recipe that only works for one clip, hey, let's talk about what some of this stuff does so you can actually take this and apply it to your own video projects and just, you know, hey, maybe learn a little bit about uh, grading and color correcting and just playing with these color settings in general here in Premiere Pro. It's a whole lot of fun. So for Lumetri Color and the color wheels and curves and the basic color corrections and temperature and just all the other stuff that we covered today in this Premiere Pro tutorial. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.